I would like to introduce a poet, former campaigner, former ILF recipient, and whose memoir, First in the World Somewhere, was published this year. Please give a warm welcome to Penny Pepper. Yeah, yeah, I can see. <laughs> I'm going to just start with some small little readings, and hopefully Brian's going to, going to just tell me when to stop or prod me or. I'll prod you. <laughs> I'll read two short readings to start with, and this first one is when I had just moved into my flat with my best friend Tansy in 1985. We don't have a lot, but what we do have is ours. In the lounge, a battered, chunky sideboard in dingy, stained wood. No cooker, but a baby belly. A stupendous microwave and a small fridge. Living independently just wasn't done by the likes of us. Armies of social workers kept telling us from the start but Tansin and me knew it would happen. Their foot dragging, their envious form filling slowed us down. But while they dithered, we gathered stuff whatever we could, wherever we could. We weren't fussy and we weren't embarrassed by the tap we were forced to collect from jungle sales and charity shops. One friend I used to visit, Ellen, had been sent to a care home when her parents died. It was another planet to me. Sneering attendants neglected her, patronised her, stole her few wretched possessions. I think of Ellen now as Anne puts up the curtains. I am a writer, I am a punk, and I am passionate. I will never be put into a home. Just moving on, so moved on a little bit now. So we're in a, a two bed flat in East London in, in uh, Leighton. Sandra, our home help, enters our flat with a high pitched cooey and we respond with our cooey. <laughs> Tansin and me had been a bit snide about the home help at first, but we love Sandra to bits. A treasure. She's bright, like an eager sparrow in her late forties with a round, friendly face. Personal care, dressing and cooking isn't easy. Up until now, it was our mums doing what mums do and what mums have always done for their crippled children. So after he's here to prepare our evening meal and get us undressed, that's if there's time. Dinner first, Sandra says, looking at us in turn, or a quick strip. You both said on Monday you were feeling really tired. I sigh. Oh, it's only 4.30, Sandra. I can't bear it. Getting undressed before dinner? Who uh -huh. want to escape all that? Almost as bad as being in the Cheshire home, says Tamsi. But we're not moaning at you, Sandra. Sandra has an amazing ability to do jobs as she talks. Occasionally catching my eye, she proceeds to change my bed, cl bed clothes. You're not in an institution. You can do what you want. You know I don't mind stringing it out to the last moment. Tamsin and me exchange mournful glasses, glances. We're always knackered from the extraordinary complexity of managing stuff. Getting out of bed, using gadgets to drag things over our heads. No. Swaying to a toilet, wondering whether you can even manage the shower. Wondering whether you smell and whether you can wait another day when Sandra can help. Wondering how to use some precious minutes from the six hours we have with her each week. At 
least we didn't bother to struggle with our types, I say. After all, Sandra, what's the point of putting them on when you have no guests? The point might be staying warm, <laughs> smiled Sandra. It won't be long before the cold sets in. She skips to the kitchen as Tansy and me shrug. I go back to the typewriter. All day, in between party plans, there's writing and music. Thank you. One, I'll just do one more small one. Today I'm weary after a doze, and Sandra's cheerfulness startles me. The juggling of her six hours help, the permanent challenge, the choices we have to make. Tamsin is already up and in the kitchen with Sandra. I slouch in, wobbling on my self-painted walking stick, all multicoloured with bells. Sandra asks about dinner with a teasing smile. What do you want to eat tonight? Tamsin and me look at each other. I'm always stumped. My priorities are nothing to do with food. My hair is a mess. I can't bear my boyfriend Freddie to see me in a dishevelled state the next day. Sandwich for me, I bleat. No butter, cheese, and a teaspoon of salad cream, please. Nothing hot, Pen. Sandra's Sandra flashes keen eyes. Oh no, Mrs. Madam, Tamsin says, pulling a face. I know what she likes hot. We all laugh. Tamsin can never let an innuendo go. <laughs> the sandwich is fine, I say. Then I'll help you get on with washing my hair. Tuna sweet corn for me, Tamsin echoes. My hair won't take long either. Sandra, sweet, caring Sandra, sighs. She will always do as we ask. We chat as she makes the food and cuts the bread into triangles. Our cats slink into the kitchen, hypnotised by the smell of tuna. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Freddie. Go mingle, meet people, she says. 
I've got to dash and sort out Heather. Total mess, Penny, with community transport. And she so desperately wants to come. She rolls her eyes and whizzes off in her wheelchair. I have a deep throb of envy, wondering how on earth I can get one. Another precious dream to let me do more things I dream of. Let's go and meet Ian Dury, says Freddie. And we set off in the opposite direction. The hall is rammed. I have never seen anything like it, not even at special school. I detect the buzz, the animation, and feel it lift my spirits. A blind woman is playing the piano. Claire Braden James sings as her deft fingers dance over the keys. I spot Elspeth Morrison and others I've seen at the Arts Line meetings. We applaud loudly when Claire finishes. There is a hush. And from the entrance, Ian Dury swaggers in, leaning on a walking stick. Ian Dury, the disabled pop star with the flash rash of a cockney pirate, the blockhead's frontman and lyricist. He had polio as a kid, walks with a limp and wears a caliper. He's one of us. As my excitement grows, all I can think of, he broke the mold. He broke the mold. He broke down barriers. Ian is handsome, and his keen eyes sweep across us all. I'm struck speechless, but wiggle in my tra chair to straighten my back and look my best. Ian launches into the bus driver's prayer. Oh, Father, you are in Hendon. <laughs> I'm whispering to myself following his words that I love so much. Freddy fumbles around in the bag, hanging on my chair, retrieving a demo cassette tape. Are you ready, Ben? As soon as he's finished, we'll nab him, he says, and edges me forward. Ian goes through his hips and I stare at him, soaking up every piece he does, tasting his charisma. We applaud and cheer and show our approval in any way we can. My hands don't clap, but I stamp my boots on the floor. Freddy pushes me closer, closer. And I'm sure I can smell the sweat of Ian Dury. <laughs> His curious, intelligent eyes catch me quickly. My mouth is dry and my hands quiver. Hello, Lydia. How are you? Says Ian with a big, sexy grin. I smile and swallow, swimming in such shyness I think I might drown. Thanks. Fine. I croak as my face blasts hot, as my mind blanks. Freddy looks at me with a sideways glance and a hint of a frown. Ian is entranced by my dress. The bus area especially. <laughs> Back to me, you may, right. Freddy says, and they shake hands. I wonder whether you'll take the similar tape. Penn writes and sings all her own work. It'd be great to hear what you think. Of course, darlings, of course. Can't promise to be quick, though. Everything is very full on. Thanks, I whisper, praying for Freddy to wheel me back far, far away from this gut-churning embarrassment. When Sean Basie announces that we have officially launched the London Disability Arts Forum, there is no fear in me. I know I'm coming home, and I want to learn to be happy to be me, and whatever else. I'm not alone in knowing it's okay to be who I am, to want to write and sing and to fight back. Thank you, Penny. That was wonderful. I really enjoyed that. I'm sure everyone else did. Okay. Oh, sorry, Brighton. Sorry. I've just got... Can I just say I do have books to say? <laughs> they're... they're um... They're on sale today at £10. The first person to buy one gets a free copy of my book design. Ooh. I can stay till, I don't know, I can stay till about uh, three o'clock. What else? <laughs> uh, apart from which bookshop? Or... Oh, there are books available in all bookshops, Wartstone, Smiths, um, Amazon. You'll find it easy. If you, do, if you just search the title, First in the World Somewhere, You'll find it. It's basically published by a, a kind of wing of a penguin. 
amazing. So thank you so much for being here. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful yeah. audience. Yeah. Let's fight on together. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to move on to the afternoon's workshops. So, in the purple room, we will have alternative models.